For part A, we know that the speed of the crate of the uh, speed of crate mass m increases from zero to 1.2 meters per second. So we know that the kinetic energy supplied to the crate would be equal to one half mv squared. This would be one half times the mass 300 kilograms multiplied by 1.20 meters per second quantity squared. This is equaling 216 joules. We know that then for part B, the magnitude of the kinetic frictional force would be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the force normal. In this case, this is the coefficient of kinetic friction times mg, and this is equaling 0 0.400 times 300 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, the uh, kinetic frictional force would then be equal to 1.18 times 10 to the third newtons. Now we're going to, for part C, let the distance that the crate moved relative to the conveyor belt before it stopped slipping be d. So here we can say that the final velocity would be equal to two times the acceleration, the final velocity squared rather, would be equal to two times the acceleration times d, and this would be equal to two times d times the uh, kinetic frictional force divided by m, the mass of the crate. And so we can say that the change in thermal energy would be equal to uh, the, uh, friction, the kinetic frictional force multiplied by d, and this is equaling one half mv squared, or this will equal k. So essentially, we can say that the work, the total energy provided by the motor for part c would be equal to the kinetic energy plus the change in thermal energy this would simply be equal to 2 times k, or 2 times 216 joules. This would be 432 joules. This would be the work supplied by the motor in part c. For part d, we know that the energy supplied by the motor must be greater than the kinetic energy because the work of the motor must compensate for the change in thermal energy and this is essentially going to be the lost energy because we need to, the work of the motor must overcome this uh, lost energy. Again, lost is in quotation marks because energy is not lost, of course. It's always just transferred from one form to another. But here, it's not uh, the form that it's uh, being transferred to, uh, into is not kinetic, which means that some of the energy, uh, some of the uh, work done by the motor um, is going to be lost and it must uh, compensate for that lost energy. That is the end of the solution.